Good evening, Dungeon Masters. I'm Baron Durop. Jeremy Crawford, lead game designer for Wizards of the Coast, was quite ecstatic last week to show us how many people engaged with the Unearthed Arcana surveys and how excited he was to have 39,000 complete responses. But there's a major problem with collecting user feedback in this way. So much so that using similar methods in other gaming genres have contributed to those genres imploding on themselves. In fact, had the US Navy not corrected course from using the style of data collection during World War II while attempting to improve their airplanes, Imperial Japan might have won the air war. In 1943, the U.S. Navy was facing a problem. Despite the U.S. having superior technology in optics and radar, Japanese interceptor aircraft were more numerous and maneuverable than their U.S. naval bomber counterparts. Realizing they were losing a numbers game, a team of analysts were assigned to determine how to modify already existing bombers in order to increase their survivability. Initially, researchers noticed bombers would return from missions having suffered damage to their wingtips and center fuselage, so additional armor plating was added to the aircraft in these areas. The results of these modifications were troubling, however. In the weeks that followed, even fewer bombers returned from missions, all while pilots complained of the poor speed and maneuverability of the modified aircraft. This is when Abraham Wald of the Statistical Research Group at Columbia University made an astute observation. The aircraft who were returning from missions only had damage on their central fuselage and wingtips, and seldom if ever did pilots return from combat with damage to their engines and cockpit. In essence, Wald realized they had incomplete data and were adding armor to the wrong locations. As a result, further modifications were made to protect the aircraft's engines and cockpits from damage and the survivability of the naval pilots increased. This particular chain of events led to the coining of the term survivorship bias. So what does this story about World War II bombers have to do with the gaming industry? In the early 2000s, real-time strategy video games like Command and & Conquer and StarCraft were all the rage. But like a flash in a pan, the rapidly changing landscape of profitable gaming business models left the genre wanting for innovation. Video game production teams, especially at Blizzard and Westwood Studios, began relying on the most visible and outspoken players of their games, namely competitive esports players, to gather innovation feedback for the genre. Genre. Of course, the feedback from these hardcore competitive gamers further caused the genre to flounder. Developers began focusing on unit balance, multiplayer map design, and features which were only visible to the most demanding challenges of the esports ecosystem. Meanwhile, the casual gamer, who made up the vast bulk of the real-time strategy customer base, and who enjoyed playing single-player campaign missions, became further disinterested in these games due to a lack of attention to single-player narratives and gameplay. Developers were so focused on nailing the esports experience that the core casual player who enjoyed goofy, unbalanced, and powerful units as part of a deep and immersive storyline were left out to dry. And that's the rub with these 1 D&D survey responses. The kind of people that respond to these surveys aren't at all the core D&D audience. These responders are far more likely to be the most plugged in and active internet users who constantly scroll Reddit and Twitter looking for the latest drama bubbling up about anything related to the tabletop gaming industry, who smash their keyboards over the disappearance of a particular critical role cast member, or who punch their monitors into the argument section whenever pack tactics barely misinterprets a fringe case combat ability. Clearly these people are not representative of the most common type of D&D player. Casual fans who became interested in the game thanks to Stranger Things exposing D&D to the mass market. So how could Wizards of the Coast properly collect feedback from these casual gamers who likely aren't even aware these surveys exist? For starters, Wizards of the Coast could hire a consumer insights firm to ensure a far less biased response. This research firm would probably start by reaching out to the most highly plugged in players of the internet, but would use them as a through line to speak to the more casual gamers they play with. Focus group research with emphasis on these casual players will give a voice to the most common type of D&D player who have very different needs and concerns than their mini-maxing keyboard warrior counterparts. Instead of Watsy simply reorganizing 5th edition class abilities to generate interest in a 
new addition, consumer insights teams would likely find where the rules are currently too complex or verbose and need simplification to be fun for these casual gamers. Additionally, this insights team would likely focus on learning what tools freshman dungeon masters need to feel comfortable running their first campaign. Tools like example encounters for learning the ropes of encounter balance, as well as game design theory and design walkthroughs of adventure creation. Sure, new DMs can learn most of this stuff from various YouTube videos or by picking up a copy of Sly Flourish's Lazy Dungeon Master handbooks, but why would WotC allow their product to be so sorely lacking in this freshman Dungeon Master support in the first place? It's all too easy to find news articles demonstrating a shortage of Dungeon Masters around the globe, and this shortage is largely caused by players being intimidated away from Dungeon Mastering, simply because they don't have enough support right out of the books to get started and keep going. In a nutshell, by utilizing these surveys, Crawford and team is doing very little to respect the needs of their core player base, casual players who will never see a YouTube video or Reddit post about Dungeons and Dragons. I'd lament to see D&D's popularity wane only because game designers failed to honor the wants of the largest demographic of their player base. If you'd like to help me create more content like this in the future, please consider supporting me on Patreon or becoming a channel member. Thanks for watching, Dungeon Masters, and until next time, good night.